Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum dear friends. Welcome to this session of Quran for Teens. Today we'll be discussing another topic from the Quran and uh, the purpose as I always say is to have a comprehensive discussion on issues uh, which might uh, bother you and as well as educate you more on how the Quran actually looks at some of the uh, moral standards that we need to follow. So today the topic is forgiveness in the Quran and uh, I'm sure you must have read some of the verses that I sent earlier on and as I said uh, these are some selected verses from the Quran and they are not uh, very comprehensive they don't, don't cover all aspects but uh, primarily the basic aspects of forgiveness they are covered in these verses and uh, uh, I do hope that once we are through with these verses and you have understood them and also compared and contrasted them, you will have a much better appreciation and understanding of the issue uh, in the Quran. So, uh, let me start off by reading these verses. So, here we go. So, I am just going to read out the Arabic of these verses and inshallah some of you would be translating uh, by reading out from the text that you have got. So, the first of these verses uh, is being now displayed before you. This is, uh, these are actually a set of four verses, uh, verses 40 to 43, Surah number 42, this is Surah Shura of the Quran, so the words are, وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِسْلُهَا فَمَنْ عَفَا وَأَسْلَهَا فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ وَلَمَنْ إِنْتَصَرَ بَعْدَ ظُلْمِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَا عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ سَبِيلِ إنما السبيل على الذين يظلمون الناس ويبغون في الأرض بغير الحق أولئك لهم عذاب أليم ولمن صبر وغفر إن ذلك لمن أزم الأمور. So can I ask Maria Iqbal to kindly please uh, read the translation? And the revenge of an evil is an evil equal to it. But he who forgave and reconciled his reward is the responsibility of God. Indeed, he does not like the wrongdoers, and indeed those who took revenge after they were oppressed, and then there is no blame on them. The blame is only on them who oppress people and are rebellious in the land without justification. It is for those people for whom there is a woeful punishment, and indeed he who showed patience and forgave, then this is from among the matters of fortitude. Thank you for that, Maria. Okay, I am now going to read the second of these verses. Uh, so, Sine, could you read the translation of this? Those of you who are affluent and who have been given extensively while seeing someone entangled in this matter, should not swear that now they will not spend on the kindred, the needy, and those who migrate for the cause of God. No, in fact, they should forgive and forego. Do you not want God to forgive you? In reality, God is forgiving and ever merciful. Thank you, Sine, for this reading. Okay, we now move on to the third verse. It says, وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَإِنَّ السَّاعَةَ لَآتِيَةٌ فَاسْفَحْ صَفْحَ الْجَمِيلِ Inna rabbaka huwal khallaqul alim. Oh. All prophets, we have created the heavens and the earth, everything between them only with a purpose. And there is no doubt that the day of judgment is to come. So forgive them in a very graceful manner. Surely it is your Lord who creates an abundant and has a lot of knowledge. Thank you, Hamza, for this. Okay, next, now let's move on to the fourth verse. Third verse is, Wa atiullaha wa rasul allakum turhamoon. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ عِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَازِمِينَ الْغَيْزَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةٌ فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَن يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَلَمْ يُسِرُّوا عَلَىٰ مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ Samin, kindly please read the translation of these verses. Yep, okay. And remain obedient to God and His Messenger that you earn mercy and run to advantage to the forgiveness of your Lord and to paradise, which is as vast as the heavens and the earth. 
prepared for the righteous who spend in all circumstances, whether they are in ease or in hardship, and even if they encounter any excess excesses from those upon whom they spend. They curb their anger and forgive people and God befriends those people who are um, thorough in their deeds. Thank you for that. Final verse, the fifth and final verse is Hamim Ain Sin Kaf Kazalika Yuhi Ilaika wa ila Lazina min Abalika Lahul Razizul Hakim Lahuma fis Samawati wa mafil Ardwahuwal Ali Yul Razim the Kadu Samawatu Yatafatarna min Fauki Hinna wal Mala Ika to Yusab Bihuna Bihamdi Rabbihim Wa Yastar Firuna Liman fil Ard Allah in the in the Laha Huwal Rafur Rahim Musa Kindly read out your translation. Whatever is in the heaven and apart from above them, because of his awe and angels, they be of the habitants. So, only God is forgiving and merciful. Thank you very much for that. Uh, okay, now, uh, as you can see, that these are five uh, base uh, verses which. Uh, cover a lot of things regarding forgiveness and what I have tried to do here is that uh, I have selected five specific verses we each of which have a specific message and uh, each of them have something uh, which we actually have uh, to understand and uh, today I'd like you to explain some of these uh, aspects myself so that uh, uh, if you have any uh, explanations that you uh, that you need, uh, I would be gladly uh, able to share them with you. So the first of these verses, as you can clearly see, tells us that uh, if you would like to take revenge from someone who has been unjust to you, someone who has wronged you, then you have the option. So it says that the revenge of an evil is, is an evil equal to it. So. If you would like to take revenge for a, from a person who has done wrong to you, the Almighty has given you this, this preference, this has, he has given you this option. But at the same time, look what the verse, the following verse says. It says, However, the person who forgave and reconciled, his reward is the responsibility of God. So you see, uh, these verses actually urge us that uh, a better option, a higher option, a nobler option is to forgive the person who has been unforgiving, who has been unjust to you, who has been unkind to you, who has been harsh to you. Uh, but you see, there are instances in life that uh, one just cannot reconcile with oneself. We feel anger in our own selves and uh, we would... Uh, we would not rest in peace un unless we are able to take revenge from that person. And of course, that revenge has to be equal in measure to what the other person did to us. So, that option has al always been given by the Almighty. It is always there for us. But then, on a higher plane, some motivation which God wants us to uh, accept. And that motivation is that if we forgive someone, if we are, uh, we are, we overlook someone's fault, overlook some someone's wrong that who uh, that he has or she has done to us. Look what the verses say. It says the reward is God's responsibility. Of course, this means that the Almighty will do something great, something immense, if we forgive someone. And uh, th so, therefore, it has been uh, set as an option. Remember, it is not that we have been obligated to forgive always. It's not that we need to forgive every time, but there are so many instances in which we can really earn a lot of reward from the Almighty if we are able to forgive that person. If we forgive that person for the sake of God, so just thinking that if we do this, it might put an end to a lot of uh, debate, a lot of enmity, a lot of uh, hostility, and it might change the other person's heart. And often it happens that when you forgive people uh, and when you are soft to them, when you are gentle to them and instead of seeking revenge, uh, you pose to be a person who is very, very friendly to that person, uh, you see that the, the other person changing and uh, he or she actually at times completely transforms and is ashamed of what he or she had done 
uh, as an act of injustice. So I would say that although uh, it's not it's not necessary to forgive people, but it's it's a nobler option. But at the same time, since we have these exceptional cases in which at times we cannot be at peace unless we, we seek revenge or take revenge, so that option has been has also been given. So this is the message of the first verse of the Quran, my dear viewers. And as far as the second uh, verse is concerned, uh, this is uh, this twenty second verse, which is uh, uh, the second twenty second verse of Surah An Nur. Uh, the 24th surah of the Quran and this has a background actually. I am just going to briefly let you know the background so that you can see uh, how this, these verses say that uh, uh, the, 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 the verse which needs really to be uh, stressed is, uh, is the, the second last verse and if you read it uh, with the, the third last verse, you will get the message. It says, Wal yafu wal yasfahu ala Allahu lakum." So, they, they should forgive and forego. Do you not want God to forgive you? So, you see, the thing is that if we want God to forgive us, the Almighty tells us that we should forgive other people. So, to earn God's forgiveness, we have to forgive people. And this is another option. This is another motivation that we are given uh, by the Quran, by the Almighty, that if you forgive other people, one of the biggest things that can happen is that we ourselves have been at times bad, at times evil, at times we have been unjust to people. And so therefore, when we forgive people, we get a chance of being forgiven from the Almighty Himself. And this is something, my dear viewers and my dear participants and my dear friends, is a huge inspiration. And uh, the background of this verse is, has also something to uh, some, some of a, something of a message for us and that is we know that uh, once uh, Aisha Ridala Anha the beloved wife of the prophet she had been blamed for of adultery and one of the pe people uh, of course strongly blamed and they had worked up a propaganda against her and the one of the, one of the people who had worked up this propaganda was a person who was related to Abu Bakr Siddiq Ridala Anha who was the father of Aisha Ridala Anha so, when he heard that his daughter has been uh, uh, maligned in this case and she is innocent and the person who is maligning her most or one of them is one of the people uh, who was his nephew and who Abu Bakr was actually supporting from his pocket. He was giving him a stipend, a scholarship. So, what he did was he stopped giving that stipend to that person and uh, he said that, well, if you, you are maligning my daughter for a, for a cause or for something which never happened. I'm not, not going to support you. And it is said uh, in the Quran that it was, uh, it is said that it was because of this attitude of Abu Bakr that these verses were revealed. And this meant that people who are affluent and have people who are under their custody, who they support, they should not swear to not spend on them. Because you see, uh, if you stop spending on them, how can you expect the other person to realize that he is at fault? So, this was something that Abu Bakr then realized and he actually stopped doing. So, what happened was that he resumed the stipend of, uh, his name was Miste actually, the person who had uh, maligned Aisha. So, uh, he started, res he resumed that, uh, that scholarship or stipend that he was giving uh, when he saw that the Almighty has actually urged us that you should just forgive that person. Uh, because you see, uh, he is a person who might have done something wrong, but at the same time, he is a per penniless person. He is an extremely poor person. So now, someone needs to attend to him. And and here we can see this a sterling example of how someone's father who was so disturbed. I mean, imagine yourself in his shoes, and you would realize that if your daughter has been maligned for a, a sin as heinous as adultery, and you still uh, are supporting financially that person who was one of the people who was maligning Aisha, then this, is a, this needs a lot of forgiveness. It needs a huge heart. It needs magnanimity. And this is what the Almighty has urged His, his uh, beloved people, that if you want to fare higher in life, if you want to fare higher before the Almighty, then you have to do higher and, and great acts of forgiveness. Okay, so now let's move on to the third verse and let's see what the message it says. Uh, it actually addresses the prophet and says that we have created the heavens and the earth and everything between them with a the purpose and there is no doubt that the day of judgment is to come. So, look what 
the Almighty is telling the Prophet. He's saying, Fasfahis Safh al Jameel. Forgive them in a graceful way. Forgive your opponents in a graceful way. So you can see uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam many a time, almost every time that people took uh, advantage of him wrongly, he always forgave them. He never took revenge for his person. This is on record that, of course, there were certain directives of religion that he had to implement. But other than that, you have uh, we have not a single instance in which he took revenge for his personal self or he took revenge for people who were teasing him or he took revenge from people who were harassing him. So this is a sterling example once again that people who have, have taken to bother the Prophet and you have to realize that this was not an ordinary thing. The way they would harass the Prophet, the way they would bother the Prophet, as you can see one of the ways was that they wanted to bring his own household into disrepute by maligning his wives, by by doing all sorts of these evil things, but the Almighty has still asked him to, to forgive such people in a graceful way because if, when their time comes, when they have to be punished, it is the Almighty who is going to communicate this and he is going to take uh, upon himself to punish such people as far as the Prophet is com concerned. He should try his best to uh, ward off these uh, pangs, these pains that he is suffering through graceful patience. Again, a, an object lesson for all of us. And then uh, this fourth verse, again, is something uh, which is very important. And the part that you need to hear, uh, hear look upon is uh, in the middle, one, uh, in the middle. you can see in the second line, the words are, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالْضَرَّاءِ وَالْكَازِمِينَ الْغَيْزَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ Which means, uh, who spend in ease or in worship. It's not that they spend only when they are in ease, but even when our resources are restricted, even then believers uh, spend on in charity. And even if they encounter any excesses from those upon whom they spend, they curb their anger. So you see here, forgiveness is a very, very important virtue. It, it actually tells us when people ask us for something, and uh, as far as this is concerned, uh, it, we are told that uh, in spite of the fact that people might be bothering us, in spite of the fact that people, in spite of the fact that people might be irritating us by asking from us uh, things that we might uh, would like to spend on them, uh, we are being urged, we are being told that if people irritate you, uh, they repetitively ask you. Uh, look what the verse says. It says, "Well, kaze al guys, such are these people." that they are not, uh, they, they, they don't get irritated when people ask help from them. So the words are, wal al wal They forgive these people even if they bother them repeatedly, even if they become, an, I mean, uh, just to speak, so to speak, at times people who are, uh, are in need, they become uh, really a nuisance because they start uh, asking you again and again, but here we have been urged to show patience. And, and then the second thing which the verse says is, Is a fa'alu fahishatan aw zalamu an fasahum zakarullaha fastaghfaru li zunubihim. Yani if, if a person does something bad, something indecent, something vulgar, uh, they are people who would like to immediately address God and immediately ask for forgiveness. Immediately ask for forgiveness. And if they do so, uh, the Almighty forgives them. فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ And then it says, وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُوا الزُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And who else but God can forgive them if they do something vulgar, if they do something in, indecent. And the second thing it, which it says is, وَلَمْ يُسِرُّوا وَلَا مَا فَعَلُوا They don't insist on their vulgarity. They don't insist on their indecency. Uh, they immediately realize that they had done something vulgar, something bad, and they immediately pray to God that God, please forgive me for what I have done and God forgives them. So, seeking forgiveness for something wrong that we have done, uh, as soon as uh, we should do it, is something that is befitting for us and we should not wait to come out of that state or realize, uh, uh, the best thing is that we should realize as, as immediately as possible that we have done something wrong, even if it is something indecent and immediately ask for God's forgiveness. So again, uh, the verse says that you'll find God to be forgiving. And then in the last uh, verse, uh, my dear friends, 
There is another very important aspect that we are introduced by the Quran and that is that angels also ask for our forgiveness. You see, uh, look at the word. It says, "Takadu samawatu yadafatarna min fawkihinna wal malaika tu yusabbihuna bihamdi rabbihim wa yastaghfiruna liman fil ard." So we are being told that just as angels help the Almighty in running the affairs of this world, although the Almighty does not need them, He is not dependent on them, but He has chosen them to be His assistants. Uh, so look what they do. What they do is, is expressed in this verse. It, is, it says that uh, because of fear of their Lord, because of the fact that they would not like to displease their Lord, they glorify Him the way we do glorification. And they extol Him the way we do, express our gratitude. And look what it says. And they pray for the forgiveness of the inhabitants of the earth. So uh, we have to understand this as well that when we do, when we seek forgiveness from God and we are very uh, sincere in our penitence, then we would be also be supported by angels. They would also join with us in asking for repentance. They would pray for us that if, if we have done something wrong and we are sincere in our repentance and we would like to seek forgiveness from God, we would not be alone. The Almighty says that these angels will be with you They'll, they'll, it's like they will add your, their voice to your voice. Or if you ask for forgiveness, they will pray to God that God forgive these people if they have, uh, they have done something wrong, if they, have, they need to be, uh, they, they have to be made to understand the fact that there is something amiss. But one thing, uh, my dear participants, that we also need to understand and realize is that if we are, have done something wrong, if we have done something bad, then Mere forgiveness uh, is not enough. Uh, mere seeking forgiveness is not enough because if we have done something wrong, then we must compensate that wrong as well. So, saying sorry, being uh, apologetic, especially to that person, and of course before God, is something which is understood. But more than that, more than that, we have to compensate for something bad that we did, so that, so that the other person is also. Uh, compensated for what we had taken away from him or what harm we had done to that person. So this is a, in a nutshell you can see uh, is a message uh, that each of these verses gives uh, and I think that you can clearly see that each of these have a separate ring. Just uh, give me, uh, let me give you a one liner from each of these uh, five uh, passages so that you can uh, take home a message from each of these five passages. The first actually tells us that the you can seek revenge, but if you are able to forgive that person, then this is something which God would really like. And then the second says that, again, if you want to be forgiven by God, you, you're, you're given this incentive that if you want to be forgiven, then start forgiving others. So, it's as simple as that. And then the third verse says that the, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam himself was urged by the Almighty to, to forgive his enemies as much as he could, because as far as Punishing them is concerned, this is something which God himself will do as far as the Prophet is concerned. At that stage in which these verses were revealed, he should actually forgive his enemies. And then the fourth actually tells us that when people uh, irritate us by, by asking for help again and again, we should not get irritated. We should forgive them because remember there are people who are, uh, who are uh, poor, who are needy and you see, need makes them or compels them to ask for help again and again, ask for money again and again. So if we are not being able to help them, at least we should be pleasant and just ward off these, these, these emotions of anger if, if they arise in us. So this is also something very important. And the last of these verses, the message that it gives us is that when we seek repentance, or when we seek forgiveness from the Almighty, we are not alone. We have the company of angels. They also pray for us, but we have to earn that forgiveness by being penitent, of course, being uh, in, a, in a position that we are really, really sorry and ashamed for what we did. And at the same time, we compensate the wrong we did for that, uh, against that person because that is part of that forgiveness. Unless we are able to set right the harm in some way or the other, uh, we would not be eligible for God's forgiveness. So these were the messages uh, which these 
verses have are meant to give and I thought that I'd explain them to you. So now I would like to come to some of the comprehension questions uh, and I would like to ask you to give me uh, your input regarding some of these uh, some of these areas. So uh, my first question is that enumerate instances in which we do not normally forgive people even though we should forgive them at such instances. So, of course, there are instances which warrant the fact that the other person needs to be forgiven. So, uh, I would like you to just think for a moment that what exactly could be instances in which we would like, uh, in which the other person actually deserves to be forgiven, but we are not that magnanimous and we do not forgive that person. So just think for a moment and if anything comes to your mind, any one of you, just let me know. Think of the fact that a person deserves to be forgiving and when is it that he deserves to be forgiven? So that is the instance that if a person deserves forgiveness, we should, I mean, forgive that person. But then what are those instances? Rayan, can I ask you, does anything come to your mind? Um, when someone forgets something? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So, if someone does something out of ignorance, he or she does not do something on purpose. So, I think this is one area in which we should be forgiving because he never intended or that person never intended. So, that's a beautiful answer, Riyan. Okay. Uh, what about uh, Amira? I do agree with uh, the last person that she said that um, it doesn't have on purpose. Mm -hmm. I think this happened to say that. So then they need, uh, you have to forgive them. Okay. And you shouldn't keep a grudge. You shouldn't keep a grudge when something has been done accidentally. But that has already been pointed out by Rayan. Do you think, can you think of someone, something else? Mm -hmm. What about the fact when we punish someone, uh, when a person is really sorry? I mean, uh, for example, there are instances in which people feel really sorry for their, what, what they have done, but the revenge in us and the anger in us is so strong that we become in, unforgiving. So, isn't that, wouldn't that count also in an instance that if a person is really ashamed, if a person is really, he, he or she really regrets that what, whatever was done was not, what was not actually the right thing to do, but instead of com com uh, thinking compassionately, maybe giving that person a chance, we still have that venom and anger in us boiling and we would like that person to be punished. So, don't you think that would be one of the instances? Yes, it is. So, I think these two instances when a person does something wrong in uh, ignorance or a person does something wrong out of uh, uh, the fact that he could have avoided that, uh, and then there is a third uh, uh, instance also. At times, a person is ashamed. Uh, of course, we need to forgive that such a person. Uh, but then at times, a person has made a very small mistake. And instead of uh, maybe scolding him proportionate to the mistake he, he or she has done, what we do is we actually utter a tirade of, uh, of abuses or we, do, we take more revenge that was warranted. So, in other words, the mistake could have was very small it, and we could have checked that mistake by a small bout of, uh, of scolding that person equal to the mistake. But what we do is that we end up doing much more uh, in return for the mistake that that person had done. So, I think that is also an area which needs uh, a lot of compassion, a lot of thought that we, I mean, uh, you see one of the things that stops us from forgiving others is our ego also. So, all of us have an ego, all of us have a certain self-esteem and because we think that people have abused us, because we think that people have harassed us, uh, so our ego is really hurt. So, uh, one of the things that we need to be, need to really conquer is that there is that feeling of hurt or that ego because that ego tells us that well, you were someone and how come that person took the liberty and he, do these, he did these bad things to you. So, your ego starts to pump you and tell you that, well, people should have respected you, people should have given you, cur courteously dealt with you, etc. So, it is here that we need to realize that we must not fall prey to this ego. 
because the ego always tells us to, to, to regard ourselves to be superior. It is here that we have to become humble. And as you have just seen in one of the verses, it says that we also make mistakes. And if we want to be forgiven by God, we should learn to forgive other people. So, I think this is a very, very potent, a very strong message uh, which all of us uh, must understand vis-a-vis uh, -vis this first comprehension question. So, thank you very much. It was uh, very nice, uh, a very good feedback from you. Okay, now let's move on to the next question. It says that suggest practical ways to make us more forgiving. Okay. So, think of practical suggestions, practical tips that can instill this forgiveness in us. Alicia, does anything come to your mind? Maybe to, to take into consideration what they're actually thinking. Okay, so that's what you call empathy, that at times you should analyze the fact that uh, what the other person is thinking and uh, this would make us more forgiving because then we would realize that how and why that person is behaving the way he or she is and that would make us maybe more considerate. So, yes, that's a very good point. Uh, I, I just saw someone raise her hand. Was it Samin? Did you say some? Would you like to say something? Yeah, but um, it's a similar point. I was just going to say that mm -hmm. maybe think of their point of view um, right. and kind of see what try and see where they're coming from as well. Yeah, so it's quite similar. Okay, okay. Uh, so, anyone else would like to add something? Fatma and Ariba? Um, basically, having some time to think or to know the other person's circumstances and um, feeling empathy for them, basically. Okay. I think, like, you have to, like, uh, try to, you know, instead of finding their mistake, you teach them, like, tell them what's wrong. Okay. So, what, like, you know. so what you are talking about is also something uh, very close to what your uh, peers just told you, that you try to understand exactly the circumstances of the other person and uh, see if that person maybe has a legitimate excuse that might not have reached you and uh, in your own frenzy, in your own anger, uh, you were not realizing. Uh, that perhaps that person deserves some lenience. So, again, it boils down to the fact that you have to be empathetic, you have to keep in view the circumstances uh, in which the other person is making that mistake. So, that is a very good point. So, uh, Amira, I see you raising your hand. Yes, I think that if we try to actively work on our self-control, then maybe we can be more forgiving. That is also a very beautiful point, Amira. And that is that uh, uh, one of the things that we need to work on is our own anger, uh, the anger management that we need to do. Uh, because you see, uh, in our frenzy, in our uh, that that uh, spur of the moment reaction, we tend to be uh, much more than what is needed. We behave in a very rash way. So self-control, uh, always realizing that you have to delay your reaction. You, the, the key to self-control, Amira, is that we have to delay our reaction. You see. We immediately get worked up. We have that rush of blood, that pump of adrenaline that tells us to Im immediately react. So, if we are able to delay our reaction as much as we can, that will always bring about a sane attitude from us. Uh, it is only when we actually uh, react immediately that these things happen. So, self-control is, is something that really, really is uh, uh, the key to this, but for this self-control, uh, a lot of work has to be done, a lot of uh, effort has to be, ma has to be made and the, the, the most important is that at times you have to realize that you, you become angry because you do not realize that there is a scheme of things which God has actually imagined for us and we become angry because we think that things are not happening in accordance uh, with what we have thought and as a result what happens is that we become angry. So, if we are more accepting of God's scheme by realizing that there are things happening which are not in our control, God is controlling them. And if the unexpected happens, we have to understand that God is, we have to see the hand of God behind it and see that he is making things go in a certain way which might not 
we, mean, we might not feel good about it, but we have to accept it. So, another thing would be to realize that God has a plan. He has, a, he has the master plan. He has the grand plan. And if we have to understand that grand plan, then things which are happening unexpectedly, uh, they must have a reason. They must have some wisdom behind them. And therefore, we might not be able to understand that wisdom immediately. Might, we might be able to grasp that, that wisdom after a while. But what is becoming of us as human beings is to accept that. And when I say accept that, it doesn't mean that we should just sit there and, I mean, go and relax and just do nothing. No. Uh, what I'm talking about here is uh, are regarding those circumstances which are beyond our control, which we cannot help. So, what we can do, we must do. But when things get out of our hands, when things get out of our control, then we have to see that it is God's hand which is working. It is God's scheme that is working. Okay, Samin, I can see your hand being raised. Yeah, I think another point would be just to, like, because mm -hmm. a lot of people, I think, hesitate to forgive because of their egos. Right. So, basically, their ego aside and actually, you know, taking the other people's point of view and considering that, you know, mm -hmm. both people might have been at fault or, mm -hmm. you know, they might have, they didn't deserve the grudge that you were holding against them. Yeah. Right. So that is also a good point that you have to control your ego and also realize that the other person uh, many a time doesn't deserve what we are giving that person because once again, we are not properly imagining or envisaging what the other person is going through. And uh, uh, one thing, Samin, that maybe you can, would agree is that at times that person might even be correct. So we might be misperceiving that person. So in our anger, we might have, we might have uh, imagined a situation which actually was wrong and our anger would ha would be unjustified. You see, this is also a possibility that the other person could have been right. The other person was behaving correctly and it was we who were behaving rashly. So, this is also an option. It's not always that we are right because at times, as, 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 as you know, that when there are these emotional outbursts, when there are these emotional happenings, we become irrational. We don't think out of uh, rationality and intellect. And as a result, there is always a chance that we can falter, that we can make a bad assessment of the situation. And also, another thing that might make us more forgiving is that if we keep an eye on our own faults, wouldn't you agree? You see, uh, all of us have some shortcoming or the other. And in order to become more forgiving, you just have to realize that, well, I am not the person who is perfect. Look, I have so many faults. So, if I have faults, other people will have faults as well. This is God's scheme. And uh, if, you, if you keep an eye of, on our own faults, it makes us humble. It keeps us down to earth. It makes us realize that we are human beings. And if I am a human being and if I can go through all this and I, if I, uh, uh, I am able to commit such big mistakes, such huge mistakes, which are blunders at, at times, other people can do the same. So, I think one, uh, one more point that can be added is that we are always uh, uh, cognizant, always realizing of the fact that we have our own faults. And another thing that might also inspire us to becoming forgiving individuals and don't underestimate this is to uh, read in history. So, there are so many stories, real-time stories, true stories of uh, people uh, who forgave other people in spite of the fact that they had been really, really being taken down. There were people who were badly misused. There were people who were uh, at times given this, uh, this, op this, uh, so you see, uh, the, as I said, these, uh, uh, f this, these stories of forgiveness which abound in our society, you just need to see these unsung heroes, these, these people who, uh, who do such great things. So, it's not just always great people doing great things. We find ordinary people doing great things. We find people forgiving other people out of nowhere. Uh, when our own blood would be boiling that why is that person forgiven that other person? He doesn't or she doesn't need, deserve to be forgiven. And here we see that out of magnanimity, for the love of God, for the love of humanity, that person comes and says, well, I forgive you for the sake of God. And uh, these are these uh, these uh, instances abound in our history. And you don't, as I said, don't need to look for great people. 
you just need to look around maybe a cousin of yours maybe a friend of yours maybe your mother uh, maybe someone of your acquaintance maybe if you just pick up a newspaper or you just throw, uh, go through a social media website or a, or any news item and you see these immense feats of forgiveness uh, so i think that's another inspiration that we can get okay uh, friends that now let us move on to the next question uh, and that is how can we forgive people and at the same time correct their mistakes this is a, this is something that you would like that person to behave himself to to be a better person and at the time at the same time you see what happens is that at times when you forgive a person that person thinks that he has got another another opportunity to abuse you he's got another opportunity to misbehave with you so this is a delicate question that you would like to forgive that person and at the same time you'd like to reform that person from not repeating that fault again okay maria ekbal anything that comes to your mind i think you can forgive people but not really correct their mistakes right okay so you think you just cannot uh, uh, correct their mistakes why do you think so uh, don't you think that people can uh, get reformed i think they'll take it more as criticism instead of really understanding what they've done wrong mhm mm so unless they ask you how can i correct my mistake you can't really tell someone you're wrong and you should do this instead right so that is also a very valid point uh, you can only correct a person when that person is willing to get corrected you just cannot force a person to change or mend his or her ways because that person has to first realize that there's something wrong so that is a beautiful point that you have made maria and uh, anything else that you can add so uh, what about sana ikbal i agree with maria because i like, mm -hmm. it's not really your place to tell them where the mistake is mhm mm i think that there's certain scenarios where you have to like tell them to mm -hmm. behave better because There's certain instances where it's very difficult to forgive someone, and you only forgive someone with the hope that they'll change themselves. Mm -hmm. I think that you should always keep in mind they may not change themselves, but you should try your best. So maybe if someone said something really mean about your family, I don't think you should just forgive them mm -hmm. instantly. Maybe you should forgive them and say that was very hurtful, but mm -hmm. thank you for apologizing, or I forgive you. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how I would. Okay, yeah, that's that's a that's a good suggestion as well. Okay, let me also uh, make this point at this instance that uh, at times you see one of the biggest ways, or one of the most effective way to touch a person's heart is that if you want to correct that person and that person has really some, done something bad to you or maybe to some other person, is that you start off by acknowledging some of the good qualities that that person might be having. There are a lot of people. who might have some very bad habits as you just said that they start abusing your family or they some say some bad words or they harass you or they tease you but if you look at a human being um, many people they are i mean they could be very bad they could have very bad habits but in spite of having these bad habits they still have some good qualities they still might be having some positive points so, so you see uh, one of the ways to correct people is to befriend them not through what they have done badly but by acknowledging the good points that they have so if you acknowledge someone's good points some of his good habits or her good habits what does happen is that you win the trust of that person uh, he or she starts to think of you as a well wisher as a person who really wants uh, to be a good friend so the critique or or the manner in which you'd like to present your critique Uh, one of the one of the uh, i would say suggested ways would be to look at that person's qualities encourage them mention those qualities in front of that person and tell them that uh, that you can learn from these qualities so that you are able to actually uh, cut out that hindrance that reluctance that has come between you, the two of you and this will actually as i said it will it will make that barrier disappear and you'll find yourself more connected to that person and that person will feel more comfortable in your company and it is here when she or he starts to feel more comfortable in spite of the fact that he or she has done wrong that at times you get the chance to communicate something you say well you are very you're a beautiful person you have a lot of good things in you and i really appreciate them but hey 
just look at these a couple of these things that that have come up and uh, which I feel as a friend I'd like to communicate. And at times it's not even possible to uh, to communicate, I mean, face to face. In such a case, maybe you can write an email, you can send a message to that person. So what this does is it avoids uh, a debate, it avoids an argument that might spring up. So uh, correction can also be done by silent, by remaining silent at times. You see, when you remain silent and the other person realizes, well, this is a person who would always talk to me, but now he is silent or she is silent. Uh, so that would be a communication at times as people say that silence can communicates huge realities great realities silence is more potent than speech so at times your mere silence will be noticed and as i said it could be that you write an email or a message or something which would touch the heart of that person and you can even involve a friend of yours uh, who could mediate at times so that the things which had gone wrong things which had gone sour between two, the two of you uh, could get corrected. So all these things have to be adopted. But you see, the bottom line is that try not to cut yourself off from people. All of us are human beings. We belong to this human family. We belong to this uh, humankind. And we inhabit this planet Earth. We are 7 billion in number. Our parents were one, Adam and Eve. We are the children of a single pair of parents. So this should urge us not to cut ourselves off from our brethren. They are our fraternity, regardless of religion, regardless of race, regardless of lineage, regardless of the country, regardless of their skin color, regardless of their ethnicity. We are still human beings. So forgiveness, coming close together, making other people feel that in spite of mistakes, we, you, are, you are most welcome because none of us is free from these mistakes. All of us have our own share of mistakes. Uh, it's, it's a realization that we need to make. So yes, thank you very much for this, this, this these answers. Okay, now let's move on to the uh, to the, the next question. And uh, the next question is that when can we be unforgiving? So we were just talking about the instances that uh, we should forgive people. Obviously, there are instances in which you can really, really be unforgiving, and you would not like to forgive a person. So does anything come to your mind? Um, it could yes, be a situation in which mm -hmm. somebody needs to be given justice. Mm -hmm. so, so then you can't forgive the other. So you see, at times you bring that person to justice and maybe you are sitting in the chair of a judge or maybe you think that a, someone is such uh, of such, uh, he has done something severely wrong and he or she needs to be reported. And at times you need to be unforgiving because at times punishment is only the answer. Uh, for a person, unless he or she is punished for a certain fault, he or she would not realize. So yes, thank you, Meher. That is a good point that you made. Meher, now it's your turn. I have another point. Um, it can be someone who keeps repeating the, their mistakes or keeps repeating those harmful actions, mm -hmm. even if you forgi have forgiven them once right. or many times. Absolutely. So yes, that is a very, very uh, correct uh, uh, example that you have given that at times a person keeps on doing this. He does or she does not realize that he or she is doing something wrong and you keep on forgiving that person and that makes that person even more audac audacious and he or she continues with that bad action. So sometimes you have to be uh, harsh or uh, shall I say you have to uh, take punitive action by actually uh, telling that person or bringing that person to justice. Okay, what about the fact that there are people who are never ashamed of what wrong they do? So, are, don't we have people around us who uh, who do all sorts of bad things? At times, they realize and they mend their ways, and then again do bad things. That just we, that's the example that we just talking about. But then there is another type of people who never feel ashamed. There are people who continuously. There could be exceptions. Uh, these are exceptions, in fact. Most people are not like that. But there are people who they actually, what they do is that they don't even realize that they have done something wrong. They don't even, they don't have any regrets, no remorse. Nothing makes them feel uncomfortable. So at times, we need to bring such people to justice by making them realize that you are, sir, you're doing something very wrong and you're not realizing that. And therefore, uh, in spite of my compassion and my sympathy that I wanted to forgive you, 
but you have left me with no choice and uh, it is only by making you go through a certain punishment that uh, you might realize that you have done something wrong and let me tell you I have seen such people as well who you at times put through a punishment through a legal system and they think that they are innocent and in spite of realizing I mean instead of realizing the fact that they had done something wrong repeatedly and never realized and for this they are now being punished they still think in spite of that punishment that they were innocent and that the punishment was wrongly given to them so you see <laughs> there are so many kinds of human beings but then let not our trust in humanity uh, stand wayward these are very exceptional cases most human beings are not like this uh, a lot of human beings a vast majority of them would be people who would melt when you, you when you when, when you repeatedly forgive them they would really feel ashamed so so do bear in mind that we are talking at times about exceptional cases and yes, sir, but I wanted to ask that what if it's in social capacity where a friend is hurting you but they're not, um, okay, as in, in a hypothetical situation, a friend is hurting you and they're part of your social circle and everyone else seems to have forgiven them. But in your mind, you think this person hurt me, why is he being so easily forgiven? These people, mm -hmm. these other people know how badly this person has hurt me. Yes, uh, that is a uh, that happens that at times uh, this this is called peer pressure, and you feel that uh, a person has done something wrong, and the rest of the the rest of the circle or the rest of the friends uh, have forgiven forgiven that person for some reason or the other, but you feel that uh, that is not enough, and that person must be made to realize this mistake. So that is a, is a that is a situation that we do encounter. But as I said, you see, uh, forgiveness is a personal choice. Uh, see, everyone is uh, everyone is free to forgive or not forgive, depending upon how he or she perceives the situation. But for for an exceptional case, for example, if one of the persons or one of the uh, individuals of a group feels that of that particular person should not be punished, so uh, I mean, he can or she can ask the friends that what what was the reason that made them forgive a person for such and such a mistake. So two things will happen as a result. Either your, the, your friends will realize, well, they have done something which should, they shouldn't have done or perhaps you might realize that you're missing something and your friends might uh, fill in the gap, give you some more information and tell you, well, uh, the, the, the reason why they forgive uh, that person in spite of those wrongs that he or she did was this and this and this, which might be some news to you, some new information to you, which might also make you change your mind. So, you see, uh, in all such cases, the, the golden rule is to never stop dialogue, never, uh, you must never have that communication gap. Communication should always be free flowing so that data is shared, information is shared and you are in, the, in, a, in a position to make the right decision. So this is just a general principle uh, statement that I have given. Uh, uh, otherwise, if you have a special case in mind, maybe you can personally uh, check with me uh, and I can maybe advise you in detail because uh, that's all I can say at the moment in, in general terms. But for a specific case or a specific scenario, uh, I would perhaps need to have more information. Okay, so, sir, so I want to ask, uh, I want to give an instance as well. I just want to ask if you can give your opinion. Mm -hmm. So, if, if someone was ever in a position of leadership, so if they were, for example, caretaking of a crop or something like that, and someone destroys the crop, so then, they're not only destroying your um, hard work or anything like that, but they're also putting other people's uh, food and um, sort of uh, sort of income. They're putting in someone else's um, life in danger or mm -hmm. in threat. Right. So then, is it our place to forgive them or show for the sake of other people not forgive them or something like that? So you see, uh, it depends uh, on a lot of other factors. If you think that the other people have been really, they have really suffered because of one single person and uh, th and that should not be the case. So it's not necessary that you forgive them. You can penalize that person because it's not you alone who, who's, who's been suffering. There is a whole bunch of people. And then there could be another scenario in which all the people maybe get together and say, okay, all of us forgive that person because maybe that person had some something, some legitimate excuse. As I said, uh, unless uh, some more information is given, I can only give you some principal guidelines. So you see, either you can f uh, get together and forgive someone if you think that person is worth forgiving. Mm -hmm. So in that case, all the people should have 
So you should have the consent of all the people. But if you want to, uh, if you are the only person, maybe you are there in charge, maybe you are your leader and you have other people, then you cannot take an action unilaterally on their behalf because you might feel that feeling of forgiveness, but you are not the only person who has suffered. There are so many people who have suffered. So either all of them, all of you forgive, uh, you make a, uh, you, you call a meeting and you uh, take a decision. So if either all of the people agree, then it's fine to forgive them. However, even if one of them says that I have suffered and I would not like to forgive, then as a group leader, you are liable uh, to re be responsible and therefore act on the beh on behalf of that person who is who is wrong who has been wrong uh, that you uh, say that okay I'm not I cannot forgive you unless that person also forgives you this is the right that you have right okay thank you thank you so much okay okay so uh, now let's move on to another question I think this is the last of the comprehension question it says that. Can you share with us any forgiving incident? So, any one of you who might share with us that something happened and uh, you were severely disturbed, you were really, really disappointed, dejected and hurt and after a time you realize, well, I I'll, I'll forgive that person. So, could you share any, any such incident from your lives? I'm sure you must be having plenty of them because all of us live amongst people and people uh, uh, are there at times uh, doing such things. Okay, that is fine if you uh, maybe you are not remembering it at this time because uh, it does happen. But do uh, make a note that uh, even if there has no, not been such instance in your life as yet or maybe there has been one and perhaps it was not appropriate for you to share in front of other people. But the bottom line is that uh, please do make an effort whenever you can whenever you are in a position to have that large heart, to have that forgiving heart, to have that magnanimity in you to do away with people's mistakes. Because this is how you are going to elevate yourself from inside. Uh, the pure souls whom God is choosing for his paradise are ones who are going to be forgiving, who don't keep grudges, who don't keep malice in their hearts, who just forget about the past, who would like to move on in life and who would always like to befriend people, whatever people do against them. Uh, in spite of all the bad things that we uh, get from people, our attitude should be to always remain as nice as possible. Of course, there are exceptions as we have just discussed those exceptions, but barring those exceptions, let us make a commitment to be more forgiving, more considerate and more sympathetic. Okay, now let's move on to this last uh, episode or this last section and this is uh, a quiz that we normally do. So, please uh, take out some time and uh, tick mark these questions uh, and place yourself in the shoes of the person who is being asked and if there is any question that you would like to uh, uh, not like any more explanation, just let me know. So, please start off. Okay, so here is the scheme. Here is the marking scheme. Question number one, the first option has 10 marks, the second option has 8, the third has 2 and, this, and the fourth has a 0. Question number two, the first option has minus 5, the second has a 0, the third has 2 and the third has 10. Question number three, the first option has 10, the second has 8, the third has 2 and the fourth has a 0. Question number four, the first option has 0, The second has, the second one is also a zero, the third is two and it's, and, and the fourth is ten. Question number five, the first option carries ten marks, the second carries zero and the third has three. Question number, question number, I'm sorry, the, the third has two. I'm just repeating question number five, sorry for that. So question number five, the first has a ten, the second has a zero and the third has a two. Question number six. The first option is 0, the second is 2, the third is 8 and the fourth is 10. Question number 7. The first option has a 0, the second has 2, the third has 8 and the fourth has 10. Question number 8. The first option is 0, the second is 0, the third is 2 and the fourth is 10. Question number 9. The first is a 0, the second is a 0, the third is 2 and the fourth is 10. 
And the last question, which is question number 10. The first is 0, the second is 0, the third is 0, the fourth is 0, and the fifth is 10. So, uh, I'll ask some of you to share your marks. Of course, it's not obligatory. If you, want, if you don't like to share them, it's entirely up to you. But for those who would like to share, so those who have scored between 60 and 70, this is, a, this is what we classify as good. So, anyone between 60 and 70? Who are Ryan. the two? Ryan. And the second me is? Amira. Amira. Okay, thank you. And any people, any person between 70 and 80, which is very good? Okay. 80 and 90, which is excellent. And 90 and 100 is exceptional. Okay. Uh, don't get uh, disappointed if you have, haven't scored very high. Even if you've scored above 60 or close to 60 is, are, uh, are fairly good marks. And uh, if you've scored some uh, low grades, even then you need not, don't need to get disappointed. Because remember, these are indicators. At times, they're not very accurate. But what you can do is you can maybe go over these uh, questions once again uh, when we finish this session and see that what has made you uh, score these low marks. And because those questions would be actually pointing to certain areas in your life that you need to improve upon. So, take this as an exercise in improvement. Don't take this as an exercise which gives a bad picture because all of us have our flaws, all of us have our weaknesses. If we have scored low, it is a, it is a motivation for us to improve ourselves. So, with these words, I would now call off this session and inshallah, we will be back uh, next week with another topic from the Quran and I hope that you are able to uh, inshallah uh, share your thoughts more frankly more candidly in the future sessions. Remember, this is basically a session of dialogue, discussion in which you can share everything that comes into your mind. There is no such thing as a forbidden topic or a taboo topic. Everything can be discussed here. So, thank you very much from your teacher here and inshallah, we will see you next Sunday at the same time. Khuda Hafiz.